Hey, it's your girl from Nine and I'm back, back again with another video. Good morning and God bless. Good afternoon and God bless. Whatever time it is, wherever you're at, God bless you. Okay. Um, today's video is going to be very different. Um, as you can see by the title, I don't know what the title is going to be because I don't even know what I'm about to say, but. Please, 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 So, this channel is just, this channel is just about, like, me and my life, you know. I, you know, people, some people don't care for my life, but, you know. <laughs> Um, this channel is about me and my life and like what I do as a, a 20 year old in the world, like how I'm making it in the world, like what's it like being an African American 20 year old woman who's also like a hairstylist and, um, you know, a natural hair um, stylist and also back in school for cosmetology. Uh, I mainly do vlogs ever since I've been back. Because um, I've been trying to give y'all content. I'm trying to be more consistent because I know that I go ghost. I really be going ghost because... <sighs> Sometimes it's hard for me to pick up a camera. My neighbor's going by, so I'm just going to stand still so they won't see me through the window. Okay, they didn't see. <laughs> Sometimes it's hard for me to. Oh, they outside today. To pick up a camera. Um, and that's because I'm always growing and evolving as a woman. Um, but I feel like I want to get a bit more personal with you guys. And I claim this is the personal channel, but I kind of keep y'all like. As arm's length, I'm just like, oh, let's do a vlog. But I never really let you guys in on who I am as a person. So I think that I should do a video on that. I guess. <laughs> I, right now, I'm letting Jesus lead me. So whatever comes out of my mouth is what he wants me to say. Um, I'm very much faith-driven. Uh, I gave my life over to Christ when I was about 17 years old, 18, 17, 18. Um, I got saved when I was in college. Um, wow, I never really like said that out loud. I got saved when I was in college. Literally, God sent me to college. God sent me to college. He told me to go. <laughs> he was really looking at my house just now. But God said, go, I'm sending you on a mission, go. And while I was there, he told me that the mission was me. So he separated me from everybody in my family. I was seven hours away. I was in Buffalo, New York. Um, my parents live in Pennsylvania. My family, we from the Bronx, but I'm all the way in Buffalo, New York. I'm from the Bronx, New York City. So I'm like seven, eight hours away from my family. But, you know, I wasn't stressing it or nothing because God sent me. So I'm there, like, I'm ready to give God my all. I'm like, okay, what we what we doing? What we doing? What we here for? All right, what we here for? Like, and, you know, every day I'm like, okay, God, I ain't got no friends. I ain't meeting nobody new. What's the mission? Like, what's the mission? What you sent me here for? Like, I don't, I'm not really into activities. I went to go try out the activities. You didn't let me make it in those activities. And I know he didn't let me make it because he told me. He said, yeah, it wasn't about how you performed. It was about the fact that I said no. Okay. He said, you did great. Okay, baby. You did amazing. But me? I said, no. I don't need you getting distracted. That's what he said to me. And I said, okay but what is the what is the mission 
what am I here for? Like, I've been here for a month or some change, God. I still, like, the semester over in another month. What's going on? Like, <laughs> and he told me, he said, the mission was you. I said, huh? And at the time, I was like, the mission was me. The mission was me. I didn't understand it when he told me. And then, you know, when I went home, I recognized why he had to send me to college. Because when I came home, you know, my family, you know, I grew up in a faith-driven family. I've been going to church since before I was born. Like, when I was in my mama belly, I was already in the sanctuary. Hallelujah. You know? But the faith that God gave me is different from the faith that I've seen around me. So... He had to separate me to elevate me because he knew that I was going to be different from everybody. I've always been different from everybody in my family, you know, which sometimes led to me feeling like the outcast my whole life. I felt like the outcast in my family. I would feel like the outcast in my friend groups. I never really felt like I belonged anywhere, if I'm going to be very honest with you. And that's kind of why a lot of people who've met me said, you know, she don't really care. She's going to stay her point of view. And if you don't like it, that's on you. I'm very real. I'm very raw. Because if you leave, you're going to leave. But at least you're going to leave knowing the truth on how I feel. And I'm not going to sugarcoat it. I used to be a people pleaser. But as I got older, I said, yeah, my patience is running thin. You know? <laughs> but, yeah, God saved my life in college. In that dorm room. In that dorm room. He, he saved me. He saved me in that dorm room. That's crazy because my roommates didn't show up and I was like, why are my roommates not coming? Like, what? That's weird. I mean, I, it was COVID, but I was like, I had two roommates. Both of them didn't show up. And I'm like, okay, the first one didn't show up. So they replaced her with somebody else. Then that one didn't show up. And I guess she really was coming because her name was on the door because they put all your names on the door. Her name was on the door. She was supposed to come. She was supposed to be there, but God said, no, 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 baby, I got some work to do. And then when I prayed to God and I was like, okay, God, my roommate coming, yes or no? Because I was about to dress the room up. So I'm like, is she coming, yes or no? God said, I'm your roommate. I said, okay, all right, uh, God is my roommate. So we're going to push these beds together. We're going to put these lights up. Like, I started dressing that room up. I'm like, okay, God, look, this room about to look real nice. For what I got okay I ain't got no TV because I didn't feel like I needed a TV I'm like I'm going to college I was not trying to be distracted I was really trying to go into my work so I didn't bring no TV I left my PlayStation at home I was like nope I'm in college I'm gonna work because I know me I bring all that I'm gonna fail I still ended up failing but that was because everything was online and I was just like the one class I had in person passed that with flying colors then they put that online and I failed that too and I said Oh, that's just not for me. So I didn't come back. But God sent me there on a mission. And the mission was for him to save my soul. The mission was for him to show me something different. The mission was for him to help me figure out who I was in his kingdom. That was the mission because while I was there, I figured out who God made me. I said, well, God, what am I supposed to do? Who am I supposed to be? Like, what like you got me here with you yes but i still don't know who i am who am i and he told me who i was while i was there i would have never asked god who i was if i was over here at home because the faith that i seen from everybody else i thought my faith was supposed to be like that but no my faith is different my walk is different everything about me is different so i just kind of was like oh wow you know when he told me who i was you know, because I was also battling the enemy. The enemy was coming with his punches. One, two, three. You know, had the three-piece combo with the chicken and the, the biscuit. And I was like, hold on, hold on, hold on. Let me get up. Let me get up. Let me get up. You... <laughs> Not let me get up. I'm sorry, y'all. I make jokes out of everything. But I was like, let me get up. Let me get up. Let me get it together. And I needed that. I needed that time away. So God can strengthen me. Because when I went home, I had such a peace that I never had before. That when people around me started arguing and stuff, I looked at the situation and I said, it's foolish. I don't know why you guys are arguing. In all honesty, you can figure that out with a simple conversation. And they looked at me like, who you 
think you are? Like, and it was the peace. It was the knowledge. It was what God gave me. Like, because growing up, I battled depression really bad. Like, from the ages of 9 to 14, I battled depression. Like, on some G joint. Like, tried to kill myself, self harm, all of that. I still got the scars. To this day, I used to hide them, but I don't anymore because they're my battle scars. So if you see them, you see them. Okay. <laughs> but I used to hide them. And, you know, I look at it now. I'm like, wow, God really delivered me. Like from nine to 14, can you like imagine those ages are very, they're very significant for the growing process. You know, that's middle school. That's the end of elementary. That's um, the beginning of high school. I was dealing with depression and it had gotten so bad for me. And I just thought that that was just how I was. I didn't want to be here. I looked at my life and I was just like, well, why am I here? You know, I'm dealing with all these things in my life at a young age. Oh, nah, I don't want to see what it's like when I get older. I think I'm going to end it now, which is why when some people will ask me, who you want to be in the future. And I couldn't answer them because I didn't see a future. You get what I'm saying? Um, and it was really like, it was a sad time for me. It was really bad for me, but God came and got me. You know, I tried to kill myself when I was 14 and um, my family stopped me. Um, they caught me and it was like, what are you doing? And, um, this is getting deep. All right, y'all. Y'all got to give me a second. Y'all got to give me a second. Y'all got to give me a second. <sighs> Jesus. Help me, Lord. So, yeah. And um, they sent me to a psych ward. Whew. All right. That, that, was, that was deep. I'm sorry, y'all. I'm sorry, y'all. I don't, like, talking about this on the tube, I barely tell people this in my real life. So, talking about this on the tube is crazy but i feel like god has got to be and he's leading me so i'm gonna just tell y'all all right so hmm yeah so um they took me to the hospital my dad actually because he was like something's wrong with her we gotta go get her checked out and when we was there the, the psychologist they had me talk to was like your daughter i think she said is clinically critically depressed and we are scared that she's a danger to her own life and not other people because they knew I was going to hurt nobody. They was like, we are scared she's a danger to her own life. We want to put her in a place where we feel like can help her. My mom was like, yeah, not put her on no medicine. Because um, my mom is old school. She's the old school church lady. She's the old school faith. So she's like, yeah, not put her on no medicine. And what you mean the depression? I gave her a good life. And it was like, your daughter is depressed. She tried to kill herself. I, And from what she told me, this isn't going to be the last time. And we're afraid she's going to go through with it. I would have went through with it. So I thank God that, you know, they set me down. You know, um, and so they was like, either you voluntarily put her in there or we put her in there. And if we put her in there, you'll have less control over what happens. That's what they told my mother. I remember that's what they told my mother. So my mother said, okay, and she signed the paper because she knew either way I was going to go. So they was like, either we sit in her, you have control, but not that much, or you sit in her and you have control over everything. And, um, you know, they sent me and my mom signed off and I went and I went there for two weeks and, um, she bought my Bible for me. And when I tell you those two weeks, up until that point in my life, I never opened my Bible up so much. And I look back at it now and I am grateful for it because God, oh God come on, Jesus. I don't want to cry. <sighs> Y'all, this is real. Like, God is so real. That's why, I like, y'all don't understand. I had never opened up my Bible that much in my life. Until I got in that place. You know. And I look back at it now. And I'm like God gave me two weeks to prepare. Because he knew when I came out. He wanted to deliver me. But he couldn't deliver me. If I didn't believe. 
if I didn't know that he could do it. So he set me down to get to know him and to get to understand him and know, hey, if you just give me a try, I can save your life. And then when I came out, finally, he kept me in there for two weeks. My mom was trying to get me out the first week, the first day, and nothing was working. I look back now to know that was God. At the time, I was so ashamed to be locked in a psych ward. I was like, my family, they all called me crazy already. Now they really gonna think I'm crazy. I'm not crazy. I'm just sad. Like, I don't want to live. I don't know what's going on. Like, I'm just angry and sad all the time, and I don't know why. And I'm not crazy. I'm really not crazy. I just don't know how so, how to deal with my emotions because they're becoming too much. And I thought I had a hold on it, but I don't have a hold on it. And it's a little too much for me. And I don't know what to do. That's how I felt at the moment. But I look back at it now. And I'm like, God, God did that because he knew. Whew, God had a plan. That's all I can say. God really had a plan. He had a plan for my life. Because if God didn't step in, I wouldn't be here. I'm going to let y'all know right now, if God didn't step in, I would be dead. So God caught me right before I went. I completely went through with it. He caught me. And he said, before you try to do this, can I show you something different? You know? And um, so I got out and it was a Tuesday. My mom was like, you want to go to church on Tuesday? Because I got out on a Monday. I was like, okay. I went to church on Tuesday and I prayed and I prayed and I gave it to God. And it was my last hope. I, that last bit of hope that I got, he filled me with faith and light. And I just gave it all to him. And I was like, please just help me. I don't know what to do. The doctors didn't help me. The the therapy they gave me in the place, it wasn't really doing nothing. Like, can you help me? And he delivered me. He took the spirit of depression and suicidal thoughts off of me that day. Y'all, that day, when I tell y'all, I felt light as a feather. I, It's like, I didn't even know I was carrying such a heavy burden until he took it off of me. Until he took it off of me. I did not know that I was carrying such a heavy burden. I did not understand. Like, I was just living, you know, like, thinking that's how my life was supposed to be. But it wasn't because God was the answer. So he delivered me. And I felt light as a feather. I didn't want to be angry with nobody. I didn't want to, you know, you know, not like nobody anymore. I became more to myself at that time. I'm not going to lie, I was always kind of to myself, but I became more to myself because I was trying to navigate and understand, well, what do I do next? How do I go about this? But that was my first encounter with God when I was 14. When I was 14, that was my first encounter with God. And, um, you know, that showed me, you know, I didn't recognize till now that I had to go through that so I could tell somebody. <sighs> You know, if there's anybody out there who wants to give up, before you give up, can you just try Jesus? I'm not saying you got to go the extra mile. I'm just saying, try Jesus. Sit down. You know, you can talk to him. Just sit down and be like, listen, I heard you real. Okay. Jesus, I need your help. I don't know what to do. And watch him work. Like, it's like, all you got to do is reach. Because he's already reaching for you. So as soon as you reach your hand up, your hand going to connect with his hand. And he got you. He like, look, you asked for my help. I got you, baby. I've been waiting on this time. You know, but I'm a gentleman. I'm just going to knock on the door. If you don't open it, you know, I, I'm going to wait. I'm going to wait till you do. But I'm just going to knock on this door so you can know I'm here. I'm here. So <laughs> that's kind of what it is like, you know. With Jesus, so I recognized that I had to go through that to tell somebody, you know. And I spent years keeping that to myself. A couple months later, actually, I started at a whole new school, and like everybody I met at that new school, they thought I had it all together. I'm like, baby, if only you knew six months before I started here, I was in a psych ward for trying to off myself. I, 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 
Listen, this is nothing but God's grace. I look like I got it all together because God put me back together. This is nothing but God's grace, okay? Okay? I'm not really, I ain't really got it all together. I'm not going to lie. Like, I ain't sitting over here with it all together. You know, like, I sit over here with my head held high. Yeah, because I'm trying to, I'm trying to grow into the woman I'm supposed to be. They didn't know I was insecure at this time. I didn't think I was that pretty, but I was starting to love myself at that time. That was around the time I was starting to love myself. I had morals because God gave me morals and I didn't go against them and stuff like that. So they thought that I thought I was better than them. And that's just a prime example of how God can really like change you up and fix you up so good. That really all people can see is the light that he has shined upon you. And they can't really see your struggle. They don't see that sometimes, you know, you don't want to get up in the morning. They don't see that you don't want to get up out your bed. They don't see that you always late because really you don't want to be there. They don't see that. You know, nobody ever saw it. Even in my first school, my middle school, my elementary school, nobody saw it. I was dying on the inside and nobody saw it. But Jesus knew, and he came and he got me. And that was amazing. I'm not going to lie. Like, it was amazing. And I really, 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 really love him for that. But after that, I did go back out into the world. You know, I was tempted by, you know, the sins of life. You know, uh, temptation had got the better of me. And I spent the next four years dipping and dabbing back and forth for three years because when I turned 17 I was like okay I'm going my journey and that's when I started my journey when I was 17 but God didn't save me till I was 18 so yeah I was like okay <sighs> all right God delivered me when I was 14 he saved me when I was 18 and you know he got me back on track a month ago because I did get off track again. This walk with faith, this walk with Christ is really, it's not, you're not perfect. And um, I feel like with this channel, I want to show you guys the real raw and uncut of what it's like to walk with Christ. And I want to show you guys that part of me because that's such a big part of me. Like... That is such a big part of me. And I'm recognizing as I'm talking to you guys, that is such a big part of me. God is literally my life revolves around him. Like I cannot go about it. I can't, you know, if ears or butts about it. Like my music I listen to is gospel. Like I read my Bible every morning. I read it every night. I try to go to church every Sunday. If I can't make it in person, I do it online. Like, I pray, I'm walking into who God called me to be, and it's like, that's such a big part of me, and I, 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 I don't post that, and I really don't, I never understood why I didn't post it, it's just like, I didn't want to, I didn't want to make that content, and then knowing I'm still struggling with the temptations of life, but in all honesty, aren't we all? This walk of faith is going to be a con this walk of faith is going to be a constant battle because the enemy is going to constantly try to distract you. He's going to constantly try to destroy you. He's going to constantly try to put you down. But as long as you trust in Christ, as long as you got your faith, as long as you keep going, he can't stop you. He can't touch you. He can't touch you. Let me let you know something. He can't touch you. And I have an example of how the enemy can't touch you, but I say that in my other video because this video is already long and I don't want to say it just talk, 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 talk your ear off. But yeah, so this channel, I want to show that side of me more as well. So my wardrobe is changing, so you can expect a video on that. I'm going to try to dress more modest. I used to wear like the bralettes and uh, the shorts, like... I mean, they was cute, but God don't like it, so I'm trying to change up my style. I'm trying to figure out my style for real. Like, I'm 20. I'm trying to figure it all out. So, my style is changing. Um, my diet has changed, not because of um, my relationship with Christ, but because of just overall me as a woman, how I'm growing up, and things that I like and what I don't like. I'm just, everything's changing. Um, 
yeah so these videos they're gonna be more they're gonna be more personal i should say um yeah and you can expect expect more christ filled videos um whatever he tells me to post is what i'm gonna post he's been telling me to post this for a while um jesus been telling me to post this for a while so um i'm out here trying to post it um <laughs> I've had this feeling for a while. That's kind of why I didn't upload in a couple of days. Like, it's been like 11 days since I uploaded. Because, well, my other video was having a hard time uploading to my phone. And God was like, it's time for a change. Talk about me. Tell them about me. And so I'm like, how do I do this, God? And he was just like, pick up your phone and record. Um, I actually recorded this video a couple of times throughout the years. I recorded this video the first time I ever recorded a video about my testimony I think I was 17 16 years old for the channel but I never posted it um so now I'm posting it at the age of 20 because God said it's time and um I hope you guys enjoy my videos um yeah let's be Christ filled stylish cute girls like honestly I look good. So God knows that my style, I want to look good in my style as well. You know, you have a pretty face, but if you get dressed nice, it's kind of like, you know, you cute and all, but what? But, you know, it's not just enough to look good in the flesh. You also have to look good spiritually in Christ. So that's kind of why I want to get to talking to you guys about that. Um, yes, yeah, so I'm trying to be more modest. In my clothing and my approach and um god's changing the way i talk to people he's changing the way i deal with people uh and i just want to you know give you guys tips and tricks and why you also can give me tips and tricks and we could just all grow in christ together but yeah thank you guys so much for tuning into this video make sure you know you read your bible and you pray and you trust god if you feel like you want to give up just talk to jesus trust god that's rude. I'm sorry, y'all. That's ghetto. And it's the garbage truck. Hold on. But yeah, just trust. Be a little rude. I'm sorry. But yeah, just trust Jesus. Um. Even if you feel like you don't want to trust them and you don't want to open up your Bible, that's when you should open up your Bible. Um, if you feel like you're about to give up, pray. Pray. And if you need prayer, drop your name down below. I'm going to pray for you. We're going to do this together because you cannot be alone in this journey because, you know, it do get hard. Um, so I'm hoping that we are able to build a community of faith-filled people who serve God, but also want to be their authentic selves, not try to put up a mask and trying to look a certain way, but also people who they intentions is to be with Jesus Christ, period. And learning and growing every day because this is a learning experience. You don't just get 50 and be like, oh, I figured it all out. No, you can get 50 and still be trying to figure it out. And Christ God be giving you new revelations because that's what happened to me when I was 16. The knowledge I knew when I was 17, not 16, when I was 17, get myself together with Christ. And the knowledge I know now is completely different. And I read the same Bible verses sometimes and have a different outlook. Every day is just a constant growing and a constant change. But yeah, thank you guys so much for tuning in. You can like, you can comment, you can subscribe. If you don't want to, that's fine. But God bless you all. I love you all. See you guys in my next video, whenever that's going to be and whatever it's about to be about.